Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Tom. Hi, I'm Stephanie. And today it's our unit on society, social trends, things that are popular in society, and maybe you get together with your friends and play board games.、Mm-hmm. Uh, most of the time, though, I see people getting together and they're all silent as each of them looks at each、uh, his or her smartphone, playing their individual games, or maybe they're playing the same game. I don't know, but hey, who knows? Maybe board games. Games will make a comeback, and of course, you've got all sorts of different kinds of board games: chess,、uh, checkers. There's a Go or Weichi, as you call it here, and one that's popular in the West, especially in the United States, is Monopoly. Okay, which、uh, you play here. I think there's a local version called Da Fu Wong or something、yeah. like that. It's、uh, basically the same game.、Uh, you try to acquire property, and then you try to make all the other people go bankrupt. I like that game. It's very popular in my family,、uh, especially because in my family, when we play games, we all try to cheat. You know, because it's kind of fun to cheat. You know, you want to see if other people can catch you. It's just something we do. See if you can get away with just it. Just fun, yeah. And you want to be the banker, you know, because there's always the banker in Monopoly. Right. I like that game. It can go on for hours, but it's very entertaining. Kids can play it with adults, and you're both entertained. It's one of the few games that I think that kids and adults can play together and still have a good time. So we're going to talk about Monopoly's untold story. You know. Oh, what you were mentioning when people get together, they're kind of looking at their phones, so they're not really talking to each other. When I have a party, the rule is you have to put your phone in a box, and you can't t- get your phone until you go and you leave to go home. Because what's the point of being together? Or if we're going out to eat at a restaurant, no phones allowed. You must keep your phone in your bag or your purse. Well, you you can tell how old you are and how old I am based on what we're saying now, because、uh, we were born during a time when we did not have the internet. Okay, so people nowadays probably just can't understand how somebody can live without looking at your phone every yes, five minutes or something like but, that. But Tom, just this year we've had so many studies come out saying、uh, Facebook is bad for you socially. Too many people are doing selfies. They're turning into selfish people. So,、mm. get rid of your phone sometimes, guys. So here's a way to. Be entertained without your phone. Kind of fun. Yes, play a board game like Monopoly.、Yeah. But we're going to talk about the untold story of Monopoly. Maybe you've heard about the origin of Monopoly.、Uh, somebody tried to present this to a game company. They thought that's、oh, too complicated.、Yeah. No one would want to play it. But eventually, it came out, and it was a smashing success. And people still play it today. But the, there's another story about somebody who may have、uh, invented an earlier version that、uh, this person has not been. Given credit for,、mm. so let's get to it, everybody. Let's、uh, find out what this untold story of Monopoly is. Let's listen. If you look up the history of Monopoly, the capitalism celebrating board game we all know and love, you'll likely see that Parker Brothers released it in the 1930s. However, if you dig a bit further. You'll realize that Monopoly's actual origins aren't quite that simple. In fact, the original version of Monopoly, called the Landlord's Game, was invented and patented by Elizabeth McGee in 1904. Your research will also show that McGee's intentions for the game stood in stark contrast to the tenets of capitalism that the present-day version glorifies. McGee drew inspiration for the landlord's game from Henry George, a 19th-century political economist. George believed that land, along with its natural resources, should belong equally to all members of society. Furthermore, George believed it necessary to tax landowners so everyone could benefit from the land. McGee, a strong defender of George's principles. Began designing her game as a land rights educational tool. The landlord's game came with two sets of rules. Under the prosperity rules, every player benefited each time someone purchased a new property. The game was won by all when the player who'd started with the least money doubled their worth. In contrast, under the monopolist rules, players acquired property and charged rent to people who landed there. 
The sole winner was the person who could bankrupt the others. By providing a dual set of rules, McGee hoped to highlight the differences between the negative consequences that come from land grabbing and the potential wealth equality that could rise from shared land rights. Unfortunately for McGee, only the monopolist rules caught on. Eventually, Parker Brothers paid McGee 500 U.S. dollars for her patent and started mass-producing it as Monopoly. Next time you sit down for a game of Monopoly, strike up a healthy debate about the perils of capitalism. It's what McGee would have wanted. Okay, guys. Oftentimes, when we talk about history, or we're talking about an event or something in the past, maybe it was some sort of incident. Sometimes people will use that phrase. Oh, you want to hear the untold story? Uh, the untold story is the part of something that people don't really talk about so much. Maybe you haven't heard it before. Kind of interesting. Well, here's Monopoly's untold story. And to be honest. I hadn't heard this about Monopoly either. So,、uh, if you look up the history of this game called Monopoly, the capitalism celebrating board game we all know and love, you'll likely see that Parker Brothers released it in the 1930s. It's a very old board game. It's been around a long time. Parker Brothers is a big game company.、Uh, they've produced a lot of board games. I can't think of any right off the top of my head. But Parker Brothers, I know, used to advertise a lot when I was a kid, and I used to think, "Oh, oh, they made that too. Oh, that comes from them." It's a toy board game kind of company. Yeah, I think Sorry was from、uh, Parker Brothers. Oh, I love Sorry, and、uh, maybe Clue was as well. That's fun too.、Uh, I'm not sure. Those are、uh, famous、uh, board games、Card、that were games popular. Too, yeah.、Uh, yes, indeed.、Uh, board games are not so popular anymore, of course, because of technology. People are playing computer games and such, but they were quite popular. Popular, I'd say before the 1990s or so, and these are board games that、uh, are not、uh, the traditional board games that have been around for centuries, like chess, as I mentioned,、yeah. or checkers, or backgammon、mm -hmm. games like that.、Uh, these are more modern versions. So, yes, if you're interested in Monopoly, yes, I want to learn about the history of Monopoly. It's a capitalism celebrating board game.、Ooh. So we've got capitalism here, which is when we have private ownership of all industry and. And people are pretty much free to do whatever they want in society. Government kind of stepping back and making sure people don't hurt each other, but basically letting people figure out how to make and save money and stuff like that. So yes, indeed, it is all about capitalism, buying properties, charging people rent, and trying to,、uh, you know, send them to the poor farm and stuff like that. And、uh, well, Parker Brothers did release it way back in the 1930s. However, if you dig a bit further, you'll realize that. Monopoly's actual origins aren't quite that simple. So yes, it sounds like it's pretty simple. Yes, Parker Brothers released this game way back in the 1930s, but we're going to tell you the untold story today. Yeah, I wanted to also let you know what Monopoly is.、Okay. Monopoly is not just the name of the game, of course. If someone or a company, maybe an industry, in an industry there's a monopoly, it means that there aren't many competing companies. For that particular market. Now, for example, I remember、uh, when I was really young, FedEx, Fed, Federal Express, the QD that we often see around. They were the first company to have express service,、uh, mail service that would actually deliver something overnight.、Um, they had a monopoly. On that fast、uh, mail delivery service until DHL、uh, was, you know,、uh, a competing company that came along afterwards. But if you have a monopoly, you can charge more. No, there's no other company you can go to to get a lower price. So the government sometimes will. Take care of industries where there's a monopoly. They'll say、oh, that's not fair, or they'll break up a big company because there's no competition. But other than that, capitalism is private, and the whole point is to make as much profit as possible. Indeed, and of course, hopefully, the profit、uh, will trickle down to other people and stuff like that. I guess that's the uh, concept. But uh, a good example of a monopoly, I think, was when Microsoft controlled the browser market or something like that. Everybody was using. 
Internet Explorer, so the government kind of had to break them up or something like that. And nowadays,、uh, people get on the internet、uh, using different devices,、mm-hmm. so it's not really a concern anymore. But yes, indeed, the original version, in fact, of Monopoly was not called Monopoly; it was called the Landlord's Game, and it was invented and patented by Elizabeth McGee in 1904. See, we hadn't heard of this person before. No, and we actually had to spend、uh, quite a bit of time here before our program began, trying to figure out who this person was and how to pronounce her name.、Uh, I would have said Maggie or something or Magi or something,、mm. but actually、uh, we heard a documentary about her, and her name is pronounced Elizabeth McGee, and she actually invented this game and patented this game in the year 1904, over a hundred years ago. So to patent something means you get a patent. You get official recognition by the government that you are the person who invented this thing,、mm-hmm. and if somebody else copies your idea, you can sue them. Yeah, that's the the smart thing to do. If you come up with a great idea, you need to immediately go to the government and try to get a patent on it. So that anyone else who tries to steal your idea, you can sue them and say they have to pay you money to use your idea.、Uh, that's a way to get really wealthy if you come up with a great idea. So she patented her game called the Landlord's Game, and it says here research will also show that McGee's intention for the game or her intentions, what she wanted as a result of coming up with this, stood in stark contrast to the tenets or the ideas, the principles. That belong to capitalism, that the present day version of the game glorifies. So, in stark contrast, if something is in stark contrast to something else, it means they are very, very different, and it's clear to see the differences. So, tenets of something are just kind of the principles that something's based on. You don't often see tenets, but、uh, it's an opinion, a principle, some sort of doctrine, and we're talking about. What capitalism means, and I, we kind of Tom explained capitalism. It's private ownership of land and businesses for profit. And present day is just the current day.、Uh, this version of the game that we have around today that glorifies if something glorifies something else, it makes that thing look really positive, paints it、uh, in really positive terms. You don't want to see any negative parts of it. It just makes it sound like it's perfect. There's nothing wrong with it at all. Indeed, so it stood in stark contrast. It was the total opposite to the tenets of capitalism. At least that is her original intentions, or those were her original original intentions. So your research will also show that her intentions for the game were in stark contrast to the tenets or ideas of capitalism. And of course, this game glorifies capitalism. If you play Monopoly, of course, it makes you want to be a captain of industry. It makes you want to make billions of dollars and crush all the little people in the world, <laughs> and laugh as you kill, or smile as you kill, as they say. Okay, let's move on now to the next portion of our lesson for today. But、uh, hey, let's do that in just a couple of minutes. Ooh, we are exhausted now, and so are you. We need to take a break. So let's listen now to our Chinese teacher. Hello, everyone. My name is Tina. 相信大家一定都听过 Monopoly 大富翁这个游戏。不过你知道它是来自于哪里的呢？在第一个空格前面就稍微简介了一下，在一九三零年所发行的大富翁这个游戏。但是这里我们要填一个转乘词，后面的句子则是提到 ：If you dig a bit further, you'll realize that Monopoly's actual origin. Aren't quite that simple. 如果呢，你再深入的探究一些，你会发现大富翁其实它的起源并没有那么简单，也就是前面你所看到的跟后面可能不太一样。在这里语气上有一百八十度的转折，我们来看看哪一个选项比较适合呢？第一题的 A 选项 ，likewise 相同的 ；B namely 那就是。C. However, 然而，但是。D. Therefore, 因此，前面看似很简单，但是你再探究深一点，你就会发现，并非是你所看到的如此简单。所以搭配语气的转折，第一题的标准答案，我们就选择 C. However， 接着来看到第二个空格的句子，写着。
Your research will also show that McGee's blank two for the game stood in stark contrast to the tenets of capitalism that the present-day version glorifies. 其实呢，一刚开始呢，在最早还是由伊丽莎白·马吉呢，她在一九零四年设计并且申请专利，所以你的研究就会显示马吉的设计的怎么样呢？其实是 stood in stark contrast to， 指的就是与什么东西呢，有很鲜明的对比，与现今我们所吹捧的资本主义的宗旨。其实是有很大的不同的。我们来看一下第二题的选项 ：A. Intentions， 意图、打算 ；B. Destinations， 目的地 ；C. Accusations， 控诉 ；D. Complications。纠纷混乱。这里提到呢，这是 McGee 设计这个游戏的主要的想法跟打算。搭配文艺，第二题的标准答案就选择 A. Intentions。We're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Okay, let's continue with the next part of our lesson, everybody. Here in the next paragraph, it says, "Maggie drew inspiration for the landlord's game from Henry George." And who was Henry George? Well, he was a 19th-century political economist. An economist, of course, is someone who specializes in the economy: how people get jobs, how they sell goods and services, and how they survive and stuff like that. It's all about the economy. And she drew inspiration for this game from this guy. So, inspiration just means this is where you got your idea from, and you saw this、uh, happening, and you thought, "Wow, that's really cool. I'd like to do something like that myself." So she was inspired by Henry George, and he was a political economist way back in the 1800s. Right. So George Henry George, that is, he believed that land, along with its natural resources,、uh, maybe had a lot of water available on your land. That's a natural resource. Maybe you had oil or gas. That was below the ground that could be drilled for.、Uh, those are all natural resources that you might find on a piece of land. He believed that that should belong equally to all members of society. It's kind of the a communist sort of idea where the land belongs to everybody. Furthermore, George believed it necessary to tax landowners so everyone could benefit from the land. Now, America wasn't this way, but Europe、uh, around this point in time in history, only the very wealthy owned land. It was very hard for poor people to ever get out of that cycle of poverty, where they were poor from generation to generation. That's why America was so exciting for the Europeans because they wanted to go to America so they could own land、yeah. and they could really compete and they could turn around their、uh, their circumstances. So、uh, he believed that they needed to tax land owners so everyone could get some money from someone owning land. So McGee. Was a strong defender of George's principles, and so she began designing her game as a land rights educational tool, wanting to teach people that we should all own land equally. Somehow, that would make everything equal among people. And she was a defender of his principles, which means she defended him when people were attacking him. Oh no, he's no good. He's not good for the economy. Why are you listening to him? He's insane. He's crazy. No, she defended him. No, I believe that he has some good ideas, and those ideas would benefit is us all. So she decided to design this game as a way to educate people、uh -huh. about land rights, about those principles. Now, the landlord's game came with two sets of rules.、Mm. Interesting again. With two sets of rules, okay.、Yeah. Under the prosperity rules, every player benefited each time someone purchased a new property. So this is one set of rules. You can use the same game set, the same pieces and stuff for a different game, like you know, Woods of Chi. You can play that with the same pieces as you do Wei Chi. Okay, you just use different rules,、uh -huh. but you use the same pieces and the same board. So under the prosperity rules, everyone benefited when someone purchased a new property. So prosperity means. 
That's when you get rich. That's when everybody benefits. Ooh, so that was the first set of rules. Now the game was won by all when the player who'd started with the least amount of money doubled their worth. This kind of sounds like、uh, nowadays some schools where. Everyone's a winner, you know. But people need to learn how to compete because that's the real world. So I'm not sure how beneficial this is for people. Now, in contrast, here's the second set of rules. It、uh, was called the monopolist rules. Somebody who has a monopoly can be called a monopolist. This set of rules required people who are the players who acquired or got that property. If you acquire something, you obtain it. Whoever had property could charge rent to people who, after they threw the dice, they would land on that property. And if it was owned by somebody else, they'd have to fork over the money or give the money to the owner of the property. I love that part. The sole winner. There was only one winner of this particular set of rules, and that was the person who could bankrupt the others. If you're bankrupt, it means you have so many debts you'll never be able to pay back. The Money you owe, and so you probably are going to the poorhouse. You know, long ago they had something called debtors' prison in Europe. At least I know for sure, not in America. But、uh, you would be put into prison if you couldn't pay your debts, if you couldn't pay your bills. But how would you ever get out? You, there was no way to earn money if you're in prison. So I'm glad that's been outlawed. Right. I guess you can still declare bankruptcy, you can, and、yeah. maybe the government will help you out or something. But you'll still be in debt or something like that. But in any case, moving on now to the final portion of our article for today, it says by providing a dual set of rules. McGee hopes to highlight the differences between the negative consequences that come from land grabbing and the potential wealth equality that could rise from shared land rights.、Mm. Okay, so these are negative consequences that come from capitalism. I guess land grabbing, being the land owners,、uh, you could apply that to modern Taiwan. Why do so few rich people own so many apartments in the city, and why is it so hard for the average Joe、uh, to actually? Afford a house, you know. You could、uh, ask those questions yourself.、Yeah. Maybe this game is trying to、uh, educate us about that. Those are the negative consequences that come from land grabbing, and there's also this wealth equality that could arise if everybody shared land. If we all shared the land, then we'd have wealth equality. But then maybe people wouldn't work as hard or something like that because they wouldn't have the incentive. Okay, there are pros and cons to each side of this、uh, question here. But unfortunately for McGee. Only the monopolist rules caught on, so I guess she probably preferred the prosperity rules. She did, yeah. But、uh, Parker brother said no one likes that equal stuff. You know, we all want to, you know, defeat the other person. We want to win. Everybody wants to win. Nobody wants to lose. We don't want to be all the winners at the same time. That's silly. That's like playing a soccer game and you get the final score is zero zero. Who wants that? We want a victory. Not me. Yeah. yeah we want a victory. So <laughs> yes.、Uh, The monopolist rules won out. Unfortunately for McGee,、uh, it's true she didn't get、uh, her say on this because she really was supportive of the prosperity rules. Well, what happened is Parker Brothers came along and they offered to pay McGee for her patent on the game. Some people, some inventors, never sell their patents because it, it requires other people who want to use that particular idea or invention to keep paying the inventor forever. That was a mistake for her to sell that patent to Parker Brothers, but she did. Probably five hundred U.S. dollars was a lot of money back at the turn of the century.、Uh, she invented this around early nineteen hundred, so that was a lot of money back then. And once she sold to Parker Brothers, they started mass producing it, which means they produced it in large quantities in a factory. So next time you sit down for a game of Monopoly. You should strike up a healthy debate about the perils of capitalism. If you strike up, we use it a lot when we talk about a conversation. Strike up a conversation. Yeah, I was sitting in the airport. I was bored and turned to the guy that was sitting next to me, and we struck up a conversation. That's past tense.、Uh, perils are the dangers. The dangers of capitalism. I don't think capitalism isn't the best system, but it's the best system we have now. So we kind of have to deal with the the risk. 
risks of capitalism, and hopefully, people who are making a lot of money will be contributing to charity quite、uh, generously. Hopefully, helping out those who can't help themselves.、Yeah. Okay, that brings us to the end of our lesson for today. Time now to listen to our Chinese teacher. 其实呢，马吉的地主游戏是从 Henry George 得到灵感的来源。我们来看一下第三个空格的句子，写着 ：Furthermore, George believed blank three necessary to tax land owners so everyone could benefit from the land. 其实 Henry George 他认为向地主征收税负是必要的，这样子每个人才能够得益。于土地，我们在这里要考考同学文法的问题。他认为什么东西是 necessary？ 那么我们可以用 it 来代替后面的不定词片语 to tax land owners。所以第三题，我们的标准答案就要选择 B。It. 接着来看到第四个空格，这里提到呢，地主游戏其实有两套规则。Under the prosperity rules, every player benefited each time someone blank for a new property. 如果你玩的是这个 prosperity 繁荣的这一套规则之下呢，所有的玩家在每一次有人怎么样新的房地产的时候，所有的玩家事实上都可以 benefited each other， 能够彼此受益。第四题 ，A justified 是合理化 ，B convicted 证明有罪 ，C resented 憎恨 ，D purchased。购买，每当有人购买新的房地产，大家都受益。搭配文艺，我们就选择 D。Purchased. 而如果你玩的是另外一套垄断者的规则，在这里提到 the blank five winner was the person who could bankrupt the others. 既然是垄断者，那么怎样的赢家就是会让大家破产的那个人。第五题 A 选项 lame 跛脚的 ，B civic 城市的 ，C so 单独的唯一的 ，D。Barren, 不能生育的。我们知道，我们现在玩的呢，这个大富翁游戏只有一位独家、单一的这个赢得者、获胜者。所以第五题搭配文艺，我们要选择 C. So 这个字。再来第七六个空格后面的句子提到 ，Providing a dual set of rules, McGee hoped to highlight the differences. 其实呢，借由提供呢两套。套规则 ，McGee 其实是能够希望凸显这样子的不同的地方，而不同的地方就是 between A。And B 分别有个形容词子句来说明。那么他是希望借由这样子的方式搭配文艺。第六题我们可以选择 B 选项的 by， 借由提供两套规则，它能够凸显这两者之间不同的地方。Blank seven for McGee only the monopolist. Rules call down. 但是呢，对他来讲，只有这个垄断者的这一套规则呢是流行开来。所以搭配前面文句，他本来是希望两套能够并行，但是很不幸的是，只剩下 the monopolist 这一套游戏的规则流行起来。所以第七题，我们可以选择 A 选项。Unfortunately, OK. 以上就是今天的课文讲解。谢谢收听。Okay, that brings us to the end of our lesson for today. Thank you so much for joining us. We are eternally grateful, and please make sure you join us again next time for another fascinating edition of our program. From all of us here at English Digest, I'm Tom. I'm Stephanie. Goodbye. Bye.